All right, where's that video again? There, 15 million views. What's up, guys? My name is Evan Naka, and we are back yet again in the home studio. Today's another good day for a fun video review and looking back on one of the classics. I don't know, is it really a classic? Speaking of classics, I don't know if you know this about me, but I feel like on my Instagram, my TikTok, you can usually see me sporting some type of rock tee. Now, I know that it's a trend, I know it's a fad, but trust me, I love classic rock. I even have one of those old school record players that I picked up. I think it's sick, I love it. If you're on any of my shoots ever, anybody that's on my shoots can attest, I play classic rock. Now, don't get me wrong, I love all genres of music, but if I have a choice, classic rock it is. I'm sporting my vintage Metallica tee. I don't think it's vintage, pretty sure it's a remake. Anyways, getting back to what today's really about, and it's that video review of one of the classic videos that I've done on TikTok and on Instagram, and it's really gonna be centered around this idea of making the perfect GIF. Now, we can debate this back and forth all day. Is it GIF or is it GIF? Tell me! You know what? I will debate you. I don't care. Come at me. I want to hear what do you think it is called? Put it in the comments. Is it GIF or is it GIF? Is it GIF like the peanut butter? Or is it GIF like a GIF that forgot the T? All I know is that the creator of the GIF calls it GIF, and that's what I'm going off of. And I honestly don't even know if that's true, but that's what someone told me. And you know what? I'm holding on to it. And maybe it's just because I love GIF peanut butter. GIF peanut butter, if you're watching this, please sponsor me. So for the rest of this video, I'm sorry if I'm going to trigger anybody. But I'm gonna say GIF. So back to the matter at hand, let's talk about making the perfect GIF. The video I'm gonna to highlight today is my video I did with nerds. Now, this video was a paid collaboration by nerds, and I just looked at it and it said it had 15 million views, and I was like, damn, I had no idea it had that many views. Thanks, nerds, for making that video do really well on TikTok. I do like this video because I think it is a classic way of how we take GIFs, and it's done in an easy, approachable way. Now, a GIF is just a series of photos that are put together that make some type of movement. Usually, it's a little choppier than video. And sometimes, if you really want to export it, you can actually make it a GIF. So that way, when you send it in text messages or emails or put it on websites, it automatically plays and it's a smaller file. Um, and it's one of those like choppy like movement things like that. Now, you can also export these as an MP4 file or a video file. It's the same thing, but it's just made into a video. That way you have to push play or whatnot. So like for Instagram and TikTok, for example, you're going to have to upload that MP4 video file instead of an actual GIF because the actual GIF file, when it says .gif, won't play on your Instagram profile. So it has to be that .mp4, .mov, or some variation of that. But what I wanna talk about is the execution of it because that is even more important than how you do it in post because let's be honest, anything can be a GIF, right? You can just like put a whole bunch of photos like, oh, I took one here, I took one over there, here's a photo, like, eh, and it becomes a GIF or a GIF file type thing. So how do we execute it right? So let me go ahead and I'm gonna walk you through this nerds video and how I set this up and use this as my example. This is me setting up for the shot. The very first thing I do is I start pouring out some nerds. I create that base layer. The camera angle of this is that straight down overhead looking view. We're not at an angle, we're not coming at 45, we're not a bird's eye. It is straight down looking smack dab at the top of the nerds container. This style of photography, I love it. I, I, if you notice, there's a trend in all my photography that I really, if I get a choice, I like to center things. I really like that. And that's just my own personal creative choice. I'm not sure why. I mean, maybe it has to do with Naka means middle. That's a little Easter egg for you. But it just felt right, especially for this image, because I really want to showcase all the different flavors that came in this little nerds capsule and they were releasing it. And so you could spin it and more nerd flavors would come out. So it, it made sense. But that's besides the point. It's not as much about the creative. It's more about how I executed and got the shot. Before I get into showing you how to take it, let's talk about how not to take it. Now, if you're creating these GIFs and you're using your hand as the actual trigger, you're pushing the button on top of the camera, I am gonna tell you right now, stop doing that. Unless it's a creative choice, don't do that. As much as you think that it's not affecting your photo and it's on a tripod and it's stable, that little camera push just on top here, I'll use this camera as an example, right here at the top of this, when you push it down, now I'm gonna exaggerate this, but when you push it down, you're causing the camera to move ever so slightly. 
and even a little, little, just a little guy, you know, little. That's all it takes to ruin that effect of the GIF. Now, there's going to be circumstances where maybe you're not able to use a tripod or you're going to have to do it handheld. And what, for whatever reason, go ahead, do it. It's not like, oh, you must be on a tripod. Oh, you must not push the button on the top of the camera. It is up to you ultimately. But I'm letting you know if you haven't even thought about this, there you go. You're causing that little micro shake in the camera and we want to get rid of that. So let's talk about the ways to actually execute on capturing this photo. Now I have this on an overhead rig and it's pointing right down. Let's see if we see that in the video. We do. So at the end of the video, or at least towards the end of the video, about 16 seconds in, you can see the camera behind me. And that's my straight down shot. I have a 70 to 200 lens on a Sony a7R4. Now, for all of you who also know me, love my Sony cameras, the R4, my main go-to camera. Now I have the 7200 on there because I just want, I love that lens. It's one of my favorite lenses. I'll do an update of my favorite lenses on a future video, but if I can, I'm going to use that 7200. I love that baby. The problem with this setup is even if I wanted to use my hand as a trigger and actually grab the camera, it's at a really weird angle. So me reaching up and like trying to reach something and push it up, it just isn't going to work right. And it's going to cause even more shake. And so let's get rid of that. Now the two options we have is we can shoot tethered. Now that requires a little bit more of a setup. You need a tether cable. You need to be plugging it into the computer. For me, I use Capture One. Lightroom, for whatever reason, just is a little complicated with Sony cameras. So I go straight to Capture One. It's like plug and play. It's much, much easier. So another recommendation for me, Capture One for Sony's, much better. And from there, once you have it tethered in the Capture One, you can just hit that trigger button in there. There's a little circle icon and you can cause you to take some photos. Now that'll work just fine and it's a great, great option, but that requires for you to have an external laptop and the tethering cable and the software. So it gets a little pricey. So if you're trying to avoid costs, then it might not be the best option for you. Now, what I typically use, because I don't always like to shoot tethered, and a lot of the times I'm on a run and gun type thing and I'm out shooting and I'll throw it up on a tripod or a staircase or maybe a, a bench or something that just keeps my camera kind of stable. And I'll use one of these. Now, this is a remote transmitter that also has a second piece that plugs into the camera, which is, I actually don't know where the other piece is for this. All right, just ordered another one for myself because that's how much I use it. I have no idea where that other piece is, but it doesn't matter. I can still get the point across. This trigger is wireless. The other piece of it just plugs direct into the camera and you can just trigger it direct from here. You can even push it down a little bit and it'll focus if you're in autofocus and then you push it down and hold it and you'll actually take the photo. It even shoots continuous, which is really nice. So if you wanna do a rapid burst, let's say you're trying to catch someone jumping through the air, you can set your camera to a high speed and then you just hold down this trigger button and boom, 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 and it works. Also a great thing, if you're wondering this, if you do shoot with strobes or anything like that, camera will still fire the strobes as well when you trigger with this guy. So I would recommend getting something like this. This is called an Adelon, Adelon, Aodelon, Aodelon? How do you say that? Aodelon? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh. I'll put the link for this specific one below so that that way, if you are looking for one, it's I think it's about like $50 for both pieces. Um, it's not bad. Uh, it's reliable. Those cheap ones have a reputation of not firing sometimes. So to spend the extra like 13, 15 bucks, get yourself one of these. This way, when I set my camera up, I find the main focus. I put it on manual focus so that we're not searching anymore because even that little breathing in the lens, trying to find the focus going back and forth, it's going to change your image ever so slightly. So another recommendation of mine is go ahead, find that focus using autofocus, then go into manual focus and then fine tune it and then don't touch it again. Just leave it because that way you're going to maintain that same distance, that same focal distance, and nothing is going to change, especially since now you have this and you're going to have the perfect GIF after you take your photo. And just kind of walking you through the rest of this video, you can see the different steps that I took and all the different images I decided to put together where I had the green and the yellow layer first and then I poured out the pink layer. For this one, you can kind of tell this play by play, the step by step that I took where I spun it, took a photo, opened it, took a photo, had the layer of green and yellow come out, took another photo, closed it, 
took another photo, spun it again to the next color, took a photo, opened it, took a photo. And then I just repeated that process over and over again until I got the desired effect. But think about it in steps. You know, every single step you're gonna have to capture, whether that's opening, closing, spinning, moving, every piece is a photo. And then after that, you take in the post, you cut down the photos into like maybe a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds, string them all together, and boom, you have your GIF. Now, I'm not gonna do it in this video, but if you want me to, put it down in the comments if you want me to make a actual tutorial on how to do a GIF in Premiere. And I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step and the two different ways to export it so that you have your video file and then you have your .gif file. Drop in the royalty-free Metallica music. All right, that's enough. That wasn't Metallica, but they said I couldn't use their songs. All right, guys, that is it for today. I hope these videos do help you and kind of give you a better insight on how I make my videos and my thought process and an even deeper behind the scenes. Um, if you want to see more of these types of videos, please just leave them in the comments below. Let me know which ones you want to see next. And until next time, guys, I'm Evan Naka and I'll see you later. Bye.